Human Torch was denied a bank loan. Oh shit, Unique we're on New York. Red Fuck leather, New York. Yellow. Welcome, beautiful yellow people, leather. to our show. Forget about Dre. My name is Dre. For you first time listeners, we take a funny yet poignant look at pop culture, current events, social media, entertainment, and all the good shit in between. We get to be unfiltered, plant seeds of thought, and share this space with incredible guests and hopefully add value to your lives. So hold on for the ride and thank you for inviting us into your brain. Now, this journey would not be complete if I didn't get to share this with incredible friends. Please welcome, as my co-host, an amazing singer and performer who has released a new book titled From the Gulag, Memoirs of a Cod <laughs> Widow. Please welcome Miss Gemma Lyon. Hello, everybody. And our musical director, who is an absolute freak of nature, whose Nordic roots branch out of this realm into Valhalla. He is the star of a new Marvel comedy series about superheroes getting drunk called Thor's Hammered. <laughs> Please welcome Mr. Daryl Beaton. Hi, everyone. Can someone help me fix this? I can't fix it. Oh, it's my phone. I can't Is that your phone? Oh, shit. Mom and Dad, help! I need an adult. Here we are, in amongst all this professional setup and gear, and you've got your phone fucking playing. No, it's the it's the Facebook feed. Oh, our, it's our actual feed playing. Our back. feed playing back. It's we're feeding that feed on feeding a, look, back to us on a loop. If Just Darryl turn can't it off. Fix it, I don't know who can. Get that phone out of here. Put that money. Put that thing back where it came from. Russell, help me. Dad, can you take it? Oh my goodness! <laughs> this is live, guys. This is what happens when we go live. <laughs> <laughs> we actually so, tried everything. Anyway. Yes. So for those of you at home, we are professionals. Wait a minute. I can still hear it. It's Daryl. Oh, no. Wow. It was Daryl. <laughs> See, what we wanted to do was we wanted to go live within a live, like picture in picture, and, and that kind of backfired on us. Oh. <laughs> Fucking amateurs. Amateurs. I thought someone was like talking in the background while we're doing our intro. I'm thinking, what the fuck? Guys, we're I'm, doing so well. I'm fucking sweating so much. I'm like, fuck, I'm ruining everything. I'm such a stupid bitch. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm a stupid bitch. Hey, guys, listen, this is our fourth show. Okay. Fourth time doing this. So, you know, please bear with us. Go easy on us. Yeah. And on that note, <laughs> all right. What did you do this week? Kate? How the fuck have you guys been? <laughs> good man. <laughs> I'm good. I've decided um, that I want to force Kyle, my partner, to <laughs> to create me a wine rack storage unit that uh, I saw from one of my good friends, Bonnie. So we're gonna try and do that. Are you gonna make it, or is he gonna make it? Uh, Kyle's gonna make it. I'm <clears> gonna <throat> drink. I'm gonna get drink real good wine. at drinking wine. <laughs> 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 it's gonna be, it's gonna I might be empty forever. <laughs> I might do some paint. Yeah, I know. You can build a box, and you can consume the content. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> that's a great partnership, right there. <laughs> what are you, D Bizzles? Mate, um, I've just been uh, I've been doing some film scoring this week. Oh, actually, oh, okay. Yeah. Is that like trying to score? And trying to score on films at a or? film. Oh, okay, cool. Or oh, the music it's in the theatre. Yes. Yeah, on my own. For those trying who don't to pick know. up. No, I've been writing uh, it was for action, a little bit of action, an action film. Oh, so okay. thought, <laughs> lots of drums. Yeah, yeah. And Amazing. Guitars. It's great. Really, really a lot of fun. Just can't turn his phone on silent, but just you know, don't know. a lot of film score. <laughs> Pretty good with technology outside of my phone. Imagine if you did that in the film score and sent that. Mm. Jesus They'd love it. they think it was uh, yeah. Yeah, you could totally an artistic choice. Inception. Yes. Of course, of course. <laughs> a film within a film. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Dre? What about you? What's new? Yeah, what you been doing? Um, man, I had a really crazy experience on the weekend, something that I've, I've never really done before. My my girlfriend is a model, and she gets commissioned to do work uh, oh, as an actor. Look at me. My girlfriend's a model. Oh, look at me. Oh, no, right. <laughs> Anyway, Shout out. Shout so out to Sophie. The, uh, the role required her to have a partner, like a boyfriend. And normally mm-hmm. there's a token model that uh, plays that role. Yep. But because of COVID mm-hmm. and the hand holding and the kissing and yep. all that, that couldn't happen. So they asked her, do you have a boyfriend? She said, yes. Okay, cool. Uh, send, him, send us some photos, blah, blah, blah. So the brief was urban. So I, Perfect. It was perfect, right? Yeah, you're an urban dude. Until I got there and realised that it was more Keith Urban. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like Dre at the country club? Yeah, How yeah, Keith Urban are we talking? Well, were you in a skivvy? What's your golf game like? <laughs> were you in a skivvy? So it, it was almost like, oh, my God, how do we cover those tats? Uh, how can oh, he no. be less street and more Abercrombie and Fitch? <laughs> Wow. You know what? Now now I know how Whitney Houston felt her whole career. Aww. 100%. But you know what? The urban in me was getting paid. So I was like, yeah, baby. Yeah. 
You know what? Yeah, if you're watching, I would actually love to know mm -hmm. what you guys, like your interpretation of urban. Because that term is, has just gone askew, right? Mm, like it's yeah. Yeah. Well, apparently so, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, isn't that like a derivative of suburban? Yes. Yeah. Right. So then you would think it would be, uh, you know, mums and dads, cul-de-sac. No, I, mean, I think isn't it more inner city, uh, a subsect of the inner, inner city, so it would be more mm. city-like. City urban. So, what so you reckon they should have subcategories of urban? Yeah, that's what we're saying. <laughs> Man, that could actually work better. That could be, a, so is he more cul-de-sac urban, urban or city urban? Yeah, yeah. That would be more specific, more of a specific yeah. brief. What right? would you call yourself? Are you cul-de-sac urban or? <clears throat> oh, know. man. I'm more sort of. I'm down, more, I'm more turban than urban. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Turn. I can say that shit, right? <laughs> anyway, you know what? Um, <laughs> I am so pumped for tonight's show. Are you guys pumped? Yes. Yeah, man. No, not It'll as pumped as I am, clearly. No, no, no. <laughs> man, we are, no, we got some sick guests. We got some nice. incredible guests. And you know what? The great thing about this show and what I love about what we can offer our viewers or anybody that wants to tune in is that we find people fascinating and we we want to get them on the show from all walks of life and we want to bring them to viewers who may have never heard but will never forget. Mm. And so tonight we have an incredible lineup. We have first up a professional mixed martial arts fighter for Bellator, Janae Hollow Point Harding. Hey. We have a highly successful DJ slash model and the Australian Miss Hot Import Nights winner, 2017, <laughs> Melissa Grace, ew, and ew, pro ew. gamer, singer, dancer, triple threat, Tegan Bishop. This is going to be insane. And ladies, for you out there watching and listening, we love to involve you guys. We want we want this show to be the most interactive show online. So with that being said, if you have any questions for us or for our guests, please put them in the comment section. We will answer those questions as best as we can. Mm -hmm. We also have another guest who I forgot. He is a <laughs> pro bass slapper to the stars, Ooh. Mr. Kyle Ooh. Mercado. Ooh. That's right. Mercado. Exactly. So he'll be on as well too <laughs> later. But guys, we are going to cut to a break. I do want to uh, acknowledge the beautiful premises that we are coming to you Absolutely from. Sir. This is the Starter Pod Presents. And this space can be rented out by you. That's right. You. You at home can be here. <laughs> you at home can have all of this. You just got to get on that page. So I want you, I want to thank you for tuning in. And I want you to support this show by clicking over to the Starter Pod Presents Facebook page mm -hmm. and not just liking it, but following it and so you can stay up to date. And I also want you to share it. If you can share it and we can get the most eyeballs on this show, then it allows us to, to bring quality content. This, this show takes quite a lot of effort to get to you guys. And we, you know, we want to produce the best quality content we can possibly give. So with that being said, we're going to cut to a break. After this break, we're going to play a game that went off on our last episode. It was called <laughs> Songs on Crack, right? <laughs> if only. But what it is, is we do, we do as many songs within three minutes over four chords. Mm. It's, it's mental. Last week's show was crazy and people absolutely loved it. And I thought, you know what? Let's do crack again tonight and do that segment. <laughs> Wishes luck. Once All right, crack, it's perfect you because back. you know what? Our viewers, <laughs> some of our viewers, are flaky as fuck. So it's something like this is perfect for them. Stay tuned. <laughs> we will be back. What is up, viewers? We are back. Forget about Dre, and we got an exciting segment now called Songs on Crack. <laughs> so I'm gonna get DB to start up those chords. He's gonna play four chords. We're gonna keep it simple, and we're gonna sing as many songs as we can over the top of those chords. What do you reckon, guys? I'm so ready. All right, let's do, let's do. Ladies first. Oh, thank you. Okay. Hmm. What can you want like these other boys do? They stare at me while I stare at you. Oh, why can't I keep you safe as my own? The moment I have you, the next you are gone. I got this feeling hey. inside my bone. Oh. It goes electric <laughs> wave <laughs> when I turn it on. <laughs> all through my city and all through my home. We fly so high, no ceiling Good. when I'm within our zone. Come on, Remind me of a girl yeah. that I was with. Yeah. See your face whenever I, I look hey. for you. You may get through all the things you put me through. Hey. This is why I just can't get with you. Cheap bags, cheap bags. Da -da -dee -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 
That was crazy. <laughs> Fucked up words and all. So listen, guys, yeah. after this hit. break, <laughs> we're going to go to another break because I need a water after, do, uh, after that. After this break, <laughs> Hi, we have a professional mixed martial arts fighter fighting for Bellator. She's a part-time pro boxer. She has a 5-4 MMA record. It Woo. is an absolute killer in the cage, <laughs> an incredible ambassador for women in sports. Born in New Zealand, fights out of Sydney, Australia. When we come back, we're going to have... Janae Hollow Point Hardy! Yeah. Welcome back, everybody, to Forget About Dre. Thank you so much, the Starter Pod Presents, for making this all happen. Make sure you like, share, and follow all this shit so we can make this show even bigger and better every week. But for now, we're going to hand it on over to our beautiful guest over here, our first one for the night. Come on, Janae, let's go! Welcome oh, to the Janae Hollow Point Hardy! <laughs> I needed to do a Bruce Buffer style intro. Yeah, that you. was almost better like than that? all of my announcing, them, like walking right to the cage. There you like, go. Oh, hey, well done. Know, well done, guys. You know, we're you. unemployed currently, so if you need a show call, I'll let him know. Yeah, I'll, I'll let him know. Totally <laughs> hey, that was a really sexy way of uh, doing the Starter Pod Presents intro. I, I just have to acknowledge that. Oh, well, sharing is caring. I thought, you know, it can't, can't, can't be your job all the time. I've got to do a shout out to the people making it happen, you know. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. So. Before we go on to your career, mm-hmm. now I know you were booked on an incredible fight card mm. in the UK prior to some dude eating a bat. I know. And fucking it up for you. Come on, man. Man, 
How did that feel and how did you maintain your sanity during COVID? Man, like at the at the beginning, I kind of just uh, just kept focusing on training, kept doing things as I would, like um, until people kind of stopped us doing what we were doing. Um, I just kept aiming towards that date. I knew that it was kind of coming up. I knew that we were going to get booked for a London show or a UK show. I knew that I wanted to fight Leah and Leah wanted to fight me. So um, it was kind of just like keep working towards it and just wait until I guess everything closes yeah. down on you. Because um, I really didn't know it was like at that stage that the UK hadn't even closed up yet. So they were kind of the last to the to the gate. So um, it ended up obviously getting cancelled and I mean it was just sort of as casual as my manager messaging me being like nope and I was like okay <laughs> oh, <laughs> fair <dear>. enough <laughs> I was like oh, well, of course it's like a bummer but I guess you kind of knew in the back of your mind it's right. most likely yeah. that that was going to be the case and it worked out um, I mean I'm sure that they'll rebook us I'm sh and she yeah. she wants to honour the, the match up so I know that we both want to fight each other and That's it just Leon means court, right? yeah. yeah yeah the Irish girl mm -hmm. um, so obviously she has a big background um, big following at the moment and it was great we were both going to be on a like a main card um, for me that's a big deal because yeah, I have only 100%. been on prelims so far wow. and of course a main card means um, more exposure bigger the better yeah. and a big card in London of course I love yes. going back exactly mm -hmm. we're back make that money and you've got the luxury of a, a partner that you can beat up at home that's very true yeah who can beat up me too and is a little bit better than me, which kind of helps. I so can tell me. Iron sharpens iron, right? Yeah. <laughs> do you, I hope so. Do you guys, when you just kind of have like a little wrestle, um, <laughs> either, you know, just fighting or sexual, whatever, <laughs> but whenever you're wrestling, um, do you guys like, is there always this like kind of always one-upping each other? Major competitive. Oh. Yeah, major. To the point where do like, any of you get oh. hurt? Um, <laughs> like, I mean, uh, we sparred a couple of weeks ago and we haven't sparred in ages because obviously we haven't been able to touch each other yeah. in the gym and yeah. um, like all the guys are there and everyone obviously always makes those jokes. Like, I wouldn't want to be around when you guys have domestics or whatnot. And, <laughs> and then it was on. Like, <laughs> straight away, I was like, someone put that pressure on us and oh, then yeah. it was on. So we yeah. were just like winging. But it's mad because we both trust each other as well. Like, that's yeah. the thing. We both know that there's always going to be a limit and you can never actually hurt each other. But we our one ups are like clean shots rather than like a hard kind yes. of like trying to knock you out but kind of vibe, or a body shot i mean it's like this weird thing in i guess combat sports is that you can kind of go 100 percent to the body but don't go 100 percent to the head your brain is obviously a little bit more important than yeah. your liver in a sense so exactly. if you get a clean body shot and you see the like the wince you're just like <laughs> got you can you like now. tap out of arguments and stuff too like a bit. even <laughs> not even fighting it's like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, done. I'm out. <laughs> I'm just going to sit this one out. Yeah. Well, he's better on the ground than I am, definitely. Uh, um, what's he's his, what's his speciality? What's, what's so he was a he's a jiu-jitsu brown belt, should be a black belt, yeah. um, but just um, kind of hasn't been great in a while. So that's how it goes. And um, and he's been to the Worlds um, over in LA a few times, I think four times, something like that. Right. Um, so that's a big feat, um, multiple national champion, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then transition to MMA like me and um, – and then he's the kind of one that introduced me to the boxing gym we're at now, which has been um, really good because I remember we were friends before we started dating. And mm -hmm. um, I remember I sparred him in Thailand and then maybe like, I don't know, like a, a year later or something, I went to Sydney and we sparred and I was like, what has happened with your boxing? I was like, it's like improved majorly. And so I always knew that his boxing ended up improving heaps. And so then I jumped on the bandwagon and I also got um, the improvements from the same place. So, so it's good. That, that's the way to your heart, huh? It is. Just <laughs> teaching me how to box. Oh my God. <laughs> no. That's crazy. There you go. Renaked me and then teach me how to box. <laughs> and hey, that's, like, that's, this is a G-rated show. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. We've got children. So dominance now. There's children it's watching not. this <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> those, those poor children. Cat. It was it was his cat. I swear. <laughs> I've seen that You've cat seen online. That is a beautiful cat. That's my that's man. A, that's, my that's not a cat. That's like a little feline. Yeah, like, it's crazy. Fasa. Yeah. Hey, oh. so um, <laughs> so you're from NZ and you live here. Yes. Where does the heart lie? Always in New Zealand. Oh. So I'm still a New Zealand citizen, actually. Okay. Um, I, I was born in Christchurch. I moved over here when I was 10 to the Gold Coast. And yep. um, and yeah, I, I obviously did most of my like adult life in um, the Gold Coast. And then I traveled, but I always represent the New Zealand flag. And um, I guess because I am still a citizen and I, I love my heritage. So I always kind of want to represent them. I love what Australia has done to me and the, obviously the opportunities I was given to be able to move over here. Me and my mom for people who kind of didn't have much and much to be over to come over here and really make something. And um, 
I think as much as there's a lot of great guys coming out of New Zealand in MMA, I don't know if I would have started MMA even if I didn't move over right. here. So mm. you never know. And I mean, it, it gave me the opportunities I am and where I am. So it's cool. And yeah. is, is like guys like Izzy and Dan, they're leading the charge right. over there and – is, is it rising and becoming a bigger massive like i mean um my uh my work i work for like a just a mma fight store the yep. like a sell gloves well, we and met. whatnot i know <laughs> exactly yeah. this is where this all started yeah. it was yeah. great so i met well, in the fight shop i went on this wanky diatribe about <laughs> boxing gloves and she's You're just like i have a boxing gloves. Yeah, i was she's like just patiently another going, one of these guys oh, like, <laughs> oh, shut the fuck up <laughs> another one of these guys thinks he it. knows what he's talking about <laughs> about gloves and then he actually like dropped a few names i was like maybe this guy does know what he's talking about yeah but if we got in the ring i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> <And I'm out. laughs> but yeah, I'll like they out. went over. Um, there was a UFC in Auckland recently. I think maybe like six months back, and um, they went over and they kind of were just like, yeah, like it's. Um, they met with the guys of the UFC because obviously we're one of the leading brands in Australia to distribute stuff. So it's good to work with people like that. And they were like, yeah, it's improving in New Zealand, um, but obviously Australia is still where it's at. I mean, you look at like the Melbourne cards and the Sydney yeah, cards. They, they sell they, out and they mm. get massive. And mm. like Rob, we got Rob Budakara, he's killing oh, it. Yeah. And yeah. Like we get behind him, so yeah, that kind of it's thing. Building. It's building in both A and Z. I feel like we just kind of congregated. And we're like mm-hmm. we're building together. Yes, so that's yeah. good. We have questions we from uh, our viewers. It's something that we like to do is keep it really interactive Love with that. our viewers and have mm-hmm. them ask you questions because I get sick of hearing my own voice asking <laughs> our guest <laughs> questions. Cool. So we've yeah. got a question from Bailey Robertson, and it says, uh, "What would you say to other females who want to get into a sport that isn't considered girly?" Of course. Um, of course, it's going to be super intimidating. I mean, just stepping in the gym is super intimidating, um, especially when you look around and there's not a lot of people that look like you. Um, I was 15 when I started, and um, I, th- I guess I was just lucky enough to be in a great place with a good vibe. So really seek out the place that kind of has no egos, um, no major testosterone, um, that kind of thing, and then you'll feel like you are fit in and it will allow you to learn and progress a little bit easier because, um, of course, any kind of – I mean, even if you're talking, I don't know – like rugby or or women's AFL. I mean, these kind of things are all growing together and I think we're all changing our perceptions. Yeah. Um, so the best thing that you can do is kind of step forth and, and be that person that paves the way for other people. Mm. Um, I know that a lot of people around there are doing it for for you as per se to make it easier for you but um but you're just gonna have to kind of yeah make your own steps and and um i think the best bet is to find somewhere that vibes do you mentor people in in the because mm. I, I know mindset is such a big part oh my gosh, yeah. of fighting of course yeah you know the skill set you can learn but mindset that's you just know. another part i mean not necessarily intentionally mm. but yeah. it just kind of comes with the gig i mean once you start getting a following once you fight on the world stage even when i was fighting locally i mean um i would finish a fight i remember i fought locally i went to the same show the next one but as a spectator and i had a whole bunch of um young girls from about like eight to like 16 um come up to me and be like man we saw your fight like you fought you may have ended the last card we saw it it was amazing mm-hmm. um we're inspired by you like we do jujitsu like it might not even be mma specifically yeah. but we do jujitsu yeah. and and we really um appreciate like just you being another person to look up to and i was like from a very young age i guess i realized that people were always watching i was always a younger younger generation watching so yeah. so i guess that makes you really like conscious of of the actions that you yeah. take 100 yeah. percent, and, and also too you're signed to bellator so for those of you who know who, who don't know you've got ufc and bellator pepsi cola michelle yes. barack uh jay-z <laughs> yes. like yes. so you're a part of bellator <laughs> yes. how the hell did that happen like to get into these organizations you've got to be fucking good yeah of course it was hard i mean um the best thing that I did, um, because there's not a lot of females in Australia, I was running out of opponents. Um, so I decided that I was going to hit the Asian scene. I was just going to go over to Thailand. I was going to live there. Um, I was going to try a network, obviously, and try get on those, um, I guess, Asian and Middle Eastern shows because there's quite a lot mm-hmm. if you go up there and you're kind of a little bit more central. Yeah. Um, and there's and as well, like you get to the, the gyms over there and there is a, a major um, difference in demographic. There's a lot of Russians, there's Canadians, there's mm. US people. Mm-hmm. There's all sorts of people that you can network and. Yep. And really get to know, and so um, I think within like within like three days of landing in Thailand, I got offered a fight in Hong Kong in about like three weeks' time, and so I was like, screw it! I was like, this is going to be the thing that like is going to define my position at the gym. It's going to define, I guess, my international presence, that kind of thing. I was like, I'm just going to take these opportunities as much as I can, and so I fought, I won, um, second round TKO, and it 
that was kind of the thing that really helped me kind of progress. Um, the good thing about females is that there's not as many of us. So mm -hmm. that kind of means you do get skyrocketed, but you need right. those opportunities. And to get those opportunities, you do need a network or you need yeah. to kind of, I guess, create your brand as well. And you have to have a pretty incredible skill set, right? Yeah, 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 of course. You're, you have to win. Yeah, yeah. You can't. <laughs> you got to win. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta Unfortunately, you yeah. Win, win. 50 50 chance. Beautifully, right? But yeah, like but yeah, yeah you got to yeah, be yeah. impressive. You got to back yourself up. And I guess the cool thing about MMA is that you can't lie. Like, it's not yeah. it's not wrestling. You can't make it up. It really is yeah. it's a tough punching each other there. in the face. So anything yeah. can happen. Yeah. And I was lucky enough that I guess people had watched a few of my fights. When I fought in Australia, I did fight the best in Australia um, at a young age and at a less experienced kind of rate and I was fighting a lot of people that were more experienced than me and I think that helped as well they were in shows like in Victor the UFC and um, Bellator so the fact that I had fought those people then also added to my resume yeah. I linked in with my manager who um, kind of created all my US connections um, and then yeah I got I got a call up for um, the Contender Series which is um, Dana White's kind of new series oh, instead of the sick. Ultimate Fighter that's so wow. cool yeah that's got a sick. call up that was mad I got to go over to Las Vegas I did my media and um, medicals and everything and then um, just dumb luck I guess it didn't my visa didn't go through um, it didn't it took too long to go through. Oh. Um, US visas are... They're yeah. Especially the O1. Yeah. Right? And a half. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I heard that. And when you do them, like when they were doing them, it's just sort of like little things, like you got to prove you're an MMA fighter to get the visa to be an MMA fighter. And for that reason, it was just taking too long. And they, so they replaced me, yeah. um, which is fine. Um, it Obviously, it was devastating at the time, but mm. it ended up kind of cycling into getting my name in the mix. Mm. Um, it gave me kind of like a UFC profile, got a bit promoted. And then I think from there, maybe Bellator saw it and i guess just my instagram and that kind of thing i just really worked on the uh, other yeah. things that i could control yeah and um yeah, and yeah my manager got the call up so i was just lucky i ended up so working people out. Are watching people are watching always <laughs> always speaking of people are watching i'm sure the people who are watching are probably thinking she's not a fighter <laughs> <laughs> <Look at> her, <laughs> so i tell you what for those haters out there <laughs> we're gonna cut to a break but after the break janae is going to coach Gemma, into performing a rear naked choke. This is a jujitsu move, okay, uh, which naked. is performed. <laughs> well, we're going to do a clothe, but it's performed behind the back and it's to choke out the carotid arteries on the throat. Um, and we're going to, you know what? Funny enough that you want to become big in Asia. Gemma's boyfriend is Asian, so we go. we're going to kill two birds we're with one get stone. Both of it out there. You're don't don't use the word kill, man. Please. Oh, okay, we're cool. just going to yeah, put him no, to sleep. No. That's right. <laughs> we, have, we have paramedics <laughs> on <laughs> hand if stones. he does pass <laughs> out. And after this break, Gemma Lyon is going to be taught by Janae Holopunt Harding how to do a Renee a a rear naked choke. <laughs> if you've got questions, please <laughs> pump so them to us, people. <laughs> Keep it coming. We'll be back. Welcome back to Forget About Dre, guys. I can't believe we're about to do what we are about to do. <gasps> now, if you're not watching this, unfortunately, you're not gonna you're not gonna see this. But if you are watching, and I encourage you to watch this because the video element of this is just as good as the audio. Janae Hollow Point Harding is going to teach our host Gemma Lyon how to perform a rear naked choke. This is a deadly jujitsu move on her boyfriend. Kyle Mikado. Can we please welcome Bring him in. Kyle play him Mikado! On. Play him on, D. Play him on. And then in the blue corner. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Now, you want to put him in the chair? Okay. Yes. So I'm going to set the scene for you, Gemma. Kyle is playing COD <laughs> like he does <laughs> and, and will not get off. For whatever reason, because he's probably he's in the gulag. He's not listening to you. He's uh, so he's not listening to you. So we're going to set the scene. Let's move this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And you you need him to go to bed. Are you nervous, man? I, I need him to go to bed. Okay. Do you even know what, <laughs> what's about to happen? I'm not nervous. You're nervous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he's playing card. All right. I'm going to hand this over to Janae. So whatever your most dominant arm is, use that one. Slip that one in. Just brush through past his neck and get this little crease within your elbow right at his chin. So get deep. Use your, Yeah, get that shoulder around a little bit more. You want the... The, I don't know if it's the owner or the radius, but you want this, um, th yeah, this one sitting flush on his neck on the other side of his carotid artery. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you want to oh, sit yeah. your hand on your bicep. So your opposite hand bicep. Yeah. Sit your hand on the bicep. Um, so use that, um, the, 
your right hand and pop it on your bicep. Oh, oh, yep, 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 yep. Gotcha. Yep. <laughs> and then the, this left hand. So we're gonna go this way. This left hand is gonna slide behind his neck, um, behind his head. Yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna push it behind his head. I feel the power. Yeah. And then you're gonna get your head in quite tight to yeah to the side. Yep. Yeah. So get your head in quite tight and squeeze. Like you can use your chest to kind of push into him. And squeeze up. I'm a terrible jiu-jitsu coach. I'm a, yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So you're gonna do it all at once. So you're gonna push his head forward and squeeze in. Yeah, and hug, <laughs> hug Kyle's head. Yeah. Keep going. He said keep, he said keep going. He's he saying keep going. He wants sleep. more, Jess. Give it to him. Yeah. Give it to yeah. him. Yeah. Nice. Oh. Nice. <laughs> he made it. We all survived. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was the first attempt. Hey, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> That's the first attempt. <laughs> now oh, Janae's going to do it. Yeah, it's my turn. Oh, now, <laughs> yes. Can no, Janae no. do it properly? Sure. Oh, wait, are we allowed no, no, to do no, it? No, oh, I don't think we can. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Because no touchy, touchy. No touchy, oh, touchy. I would love it. Guys, sorry. Okay. I reckon we can oh, try that again. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Maybe just get your shoulder in a little bit deeper. Yeah, so you want to get exactly. as far around. Yeah. So this like oh, little right. elbow right. should it's be It's not possible to ground. perform that move first time around. So <laughs> am I right? We've got yeah. we to try that again. Well, let's try that again. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Slide it all the way in. Yep. Get tight. Get that head in to oh, the side. Shit. And yeah, then yeah. bicep, hand behind the head. Right. Yeah. She's cinched um, in. That's so right. use the back of your hand behind his that's head right. instead. So that it gets tighter. He's going to sleep. Yeah, yeah, use the back oh, of it. Oh, 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 yeah, oh, that's it. Oh, oh, hey. oh, shit. He's out. Oh, my God. <laughs> Kyle. You out, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> that's I it. <laughs> Go to jiu-jitsu class. We what started something. All right, online jiu-jitsu classes <laughs> so here. I hope everyone at home knows that that's what you do to go to jiu-jitsu. Um, number one. <laughs> Everybody's going, put him to sleep, put uh, him to sleep on the feet. Yeah. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Oh everyone God. wants to see blood. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. That's so, uh, uh, please thank Carl Mikado. Yeah, he's what a champion. Lucky you didn't kill him because that's he's going to come back and play some bass for us. Yeah, he's coming back, folks. That was insane. All right, we're going to cut to another break while Kyle gets his uh, throat checked. <laughs> gets the blood back to his head. Exactly. All right. Another shout out to the Starter Pod Presents, guys. Woo-hoo! Please don't just like the page, follow the page and share the page so that we can keep doing this. And give us these comments. We don't want to actually do work. Mm-hmm. And please keep these comments coming in for Janae because Janae is going to be back after this break, y'all. Send them in, folks. We want to hear from you. Peace out. All right, if you are still with us, then you are the sickest motherfuckers on the planet. (laughs) And I thank you. And I thank you. (laughs) We are here with Janae Hollowpoint Harding. Uh, We're going to go to viewer questions. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got got heaps. Wow. Uh, Let's start with Sophie Louise Hughes. Proudest moment of your career so far? Ooh. Um, Proudest would have been my first win in um, Bellator. That was against Sinead Kavanagh. Um, It was just like I kind of – screwed it up on my first um f- my debut with them um i just wasn't quite there i was a bit uh, like overwhelmed with all the lights and everything oh, second fight came around really honed in with my mindset and was a little bit more um present i guess in the fight and it um really translated in my fight and i got a lot of good feedback from it but just that moment as soon as they were like i got doctor stoppage but as soon as they were like no nah, you won i was like that's that's the feeling that I've been chasing for a very, very, very long time. Yeah, and that's why I knew I deserved to be here. I was like, I knew. But it's just like you kind of had to prove it to yourself. And of so that course, was the proudest yeah, sure. moment for me. I was like, I've overcome a lot to be here and I, I'm, I'm really proud that I'm coming away yeah. with the win. And it's yeah. it's yeah. so much hard work. If only people knew <sighs> what, what goes into preparing <laughs> for a fight, I see it on your Instagram. Thank and you yeah. should check it out on Janae Harding on IG. We've got another question from Henry Lambshed. Hey, Janae, do you reckon you could compete with some of the big guys? Do you mean I, big girls or guys? I think, I think, I think he we've means actually good. had quite a few questions about um, men and about type of women and men being able to fight oh, and whatnot. So yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll ask yeah. that one in a sec. But yeah. I think he means like the Amanda Nunes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yep. If like he means the like the, the, the top tier. Yeah, yeah. Top yeah. Tier. Top if he means like the top tier, I mean, I, I, I would love to fight Amanda Nunes, especially at the moment. She's the GOAT. And, um, the, is she your the weight division? Um, yeah, well, she's fighting oh. at 135 and 145. So 145 is where I'm at now. And Are you calling? Is that a call out? It's not a call out. Because she's in a different division or a different promotion. Sorry, sure. at the moment, but um, but we have Chris Cyborg as our title holder in Bellator at the moment. So oh. I mean, I'm already kind of hanging with the big guys. Um, we've got people like Julia Bard and Kat Zingano and Arlene Blanco and uh, all of all of the big guys. I mean, I've already fought Arlene, so I knew I know that I can hang with the big guys um, in the sense of of those top tier 
tier lady. So obviously I'm always excited, but I would love to get some more experience behind me. I'm only kind of just hitting the overseas market right now. So mm-hmm. um, it'd be great to get a few more fights behind me and, and yeah, really work towards that title. Yeah, wow. And for those of you who don't know uh, the fighters that Janae was um, – talking about these people would fuck up probably 90 percent of men on the planet so we're talking about the baddest athletes on the planet right mm-hmm. yeah exactly so we've got another question um kevin mendoza yeah, shout kevin. out to kevin yeah. what's the first thing you tell yourself on the off days to get you out of bed and still pushing through the day yes. um me personally i'm not like as much as i am a bit of a like a a mantra kind of affirmation person when it comes to those off days i think it's better to just not think about it and just do it like rather rather than kind of overthinking it and really talking to yourself i think um my partner and i say this all the time like and especially those that are kind of like just starting out they're like yeah but it's easy for you because you you guys always train i'm like yeah because we make it a habit like Mm -hmm. it's not really an option it's a habit and it's not really a choice so we kind of just get up and go for it like it's not you don't really question it you don't Mm -hmm. stop the momentum you just get the momentum going get up out of bed make Make whatever you need to make, do whatever you need to do and get it done. No so, excuses yeah. kind of vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful quote, don't rely on motivation, rely yeah. on habits. Habits. Right? It's all yeah, about habits. Make good ha- uh, Rory O'Connor, do you slay at those boxing games at the pub? <laughs> Are we talking yeah. about like real fights? And like in the time pub? zone and stuff? Because <laughs> time zone me and my man, we <laughs> spend a lot of time in the arcade. Like, I'm I'm you do, a lot of time the in the arcade. Like, I think we've got like six cards at the moment that have about 10,000 tickets <laughs> and um but yeah we do really bad on those games oh, like, so it doesn't he does better than me but ah oh, we do bad. Bad. like we don't get the high scores all those um the ones with the big axes kind of uh, thing yes. again they're all rigged yes. they're what, all about, rigged. what about UFC uh, on the PS4 I'm not very good at UFC. What? I'm good at PS, but not UFC. There's just too many things to think about on the UFC game. I think it would be <laughs> great if they things. made a boxing game. Oh, My okay. partner said that the other day. I was like, 100%. If they made a boxing game, I'd be good at that. Yeah. But since there's just too many things to do with your hands, the groundwork this is kind like, fucks it up. Yeah, many how combos. I, I don't want to. I want to do my stuff, and sure, it's not sure. letting me. You want to punch the just doing the same like <laughs> left hand. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got Mohit Joshi. Thing. It's a great yeah, Australian Mohit. name. Have there been any funny moments in a fight over ever? And has there always been super serious in the cage? That's a great question, Mo. I'm one of those people that doesn't take things seriously, like as seriously as I should sometimes. And I get in trouble for it sometimes because I'm too kind of laxed out the back making jokes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess like... Funny moments would be my last fight. I don't know if anyone saw it, but um, my short split down the back. Oh, and, um, is it during had a, yeah. she's had a water during a function. kick. I think we we okay. can't really figure out what it was. And I mean, they did really well on the camera angles. And then just all of a sudden, someone I didn't realize I didn't realize it was happening. How am I meant to know yeah. what's going on back there? And yeah. then um, uh, they rushed in. They gave me a pair of shorts, and I was like, <laughs> "What's happening?" I was like, "Why are you giving me these shorts? Like, <laughs> just let me fight." Like you, you're kind of just like you're in the moment and you're really taking it serious, but you're like giving me these shorts. And um, but yeah, that kind of thing. And then one of my fights, I remember I got into a war um, in one of my amateur fights. And just before the last round, we looked at each other. I was like, "Are you ready?" And she was like, "Yeah, let's go." And then then we just like we're just like, yeah, we were just gonna throw down. Like I got a little bit sick before that fight, so I knew it was gonna be like a it was gonna be rough and it was gonna be hard. But yeah, we just kind of looked at each other and we were just like we just like high five and we were like, "Let's do it." And it was just the the most chaotic third round that you've ever seen. But yeah, it was cool. So people can go online. Where where can people go online to watch? your fights yes. and follow you yeah so some of the bellator fights um are on their um website um the only problem is it is a u.s a u.s website so um if you are outside of the u.s then a lot of time you'll have to use a vpn or something like that mm-hmm. and then um there's a lot on youtube a lot of mine like um uh kind of first pro fights um my one with jesse jess i think um that was my second pro fight that's got like over a million views i think just because she's got a good following now and i've got a good following so mm-hmm. yeah that one got a little bit of attention but you can see some online um just youtube me yeah mad yeah, we're gonna have to go. cut to a break soon but i i have some questions that i i know these people online want to ask is mm-hmm. are you allowed to fight guys no okay. or depends what country you're in i mean some Whoa. countries do dodgies yeah. um so there, there has been a couple of like um random underground boxing or oh, um, yeah, MMA, yeah. kickboxing like mm-hmm. yeah i know there's like a video out there of um a really good kickboxer called jermaine durandame and um oh, great fighter she's great fighter great phenomenal kickboxer Dutch. she knocks a guy out in oh. that fight yeah so it's go. it's pretty cool but me personally yeah i think it is it should be J- jermaine okay. durandame it's very okay. hard to spell that name but i'm yeah. sure you guys can figure it out <laughs> <laughs> um girl, it's Dutch. yeah, yeah. 
we'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, just, I'll figure it out. But I personally don't think um, males and females should compete. Like, I mean, jujitsu for sure, especially um, in the youth. A lot of girls fight against um, boys in the youth jujitsu. Mm-hmm. And I mean, training every day. I'll fight with. I'll train with guys all the time. But um, yeah. but when it comes to competing, there's always going to be different levels of hormones, different um, testosterone, mass, muscle mass, and yeah. that kind of thing. So yeah. yeah, it just can't ever be fair. So I think um, we all stay in our own lane, same as we stay in our own weight divisions. We should stay in our own genders. Mm-hmm. Sure, um, sure. Mm-hmm. And for that reason, we just avoid concussions or unnecessary damage. Yeah, yeah that's right. So my last last question is, is what's next for you? So obviously hoping to get that Leah fight again. Yep. Um, they're looking at doing shows soon. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing's been confirmed, obviously, with all the unknown at the moment. Um, and hopefully, I mean, it will most likely be in the US and then it's kind of like, can I get over to the US? So mm. that kind of thing. But I'm yeah. hoping to fight um, at least before the end of the year. I'd, I'd like to fight in September um, and I'd, I'd just like to get back into it. I'm going to um, give the boxing a break for a bit now. I've had, um, I think, five boxing, five or six boxing fights. And um, it's just as much as it's been beneficial to really learn the sweet science, it's um, taking away from my MMA and um, it's not give, like making me give all my focus into MMA, which mm-hmm. should be where, where I'm at. And especially now that I'm at this level. So, so yeah, just working on that next fight, um, maybe one or two more and then, and then yeah, working on the title or going for a title shot um, just mm-hmm. with the division, how it is at the moment. There's not a lot of females there. So, mm-hmm. so I'd, I'd love to fight for the title, whether it's um, Chris Cyborg and she's probably going to fight Arlene and, and, Either one of those guys, if they win it, I would like to fight them or, wow. or amazing. Yeah, in a few fights. Damn, guys, Big follow things. Janae Hollow yeah. Point Harding. Before she goes, I just want to say, fighting <laughs> from New Zealand, <laughs> fighting out of Sydney, Australia, Janae Hollow Point Harding. We're going to cut to a break. Thank you to the Starter Pod Presents for providing us with this home to come at you guys. <laughs> We will be back with something fucking crazy. So the the, the um so uh, Gemma's boyfriend Kyle, who got choked out, he's okay. And to prove he's okay, we're going to bring him back to play um, a, a a segment that we call anti bassism because he's a bass player. He'll be well. <laughs> He'll be well enough to Please play. Please thank Janae Harding, guys. Thank you so much for coming, man. Big love. Fucking legend. Thank you, girl. Oh.